everyone. Um, I just, as usual, I wanted to pop in to say hello and to greet everybody. And uh, so this week, I received a most awesome gift from somebody, somebody who watches these videos. And I want to tell you about the gift first. And it came with this note. And, um, and I believe her last name is Book or Bush. So it's from Cheryl Bush. It's, it looks like it's spelled B-U-C-H. Cheryl, if you're there, thank you so very much. And let me tell you what the gift is. The gift is a microphone that works with my iPhone. And so in the past, I've had people say to me, and some of you have written to me, to say that, um, that you can't hear me properly because of the background noise whenever I am doing my Facebook Lives outdoors. And so I found that I had, to, um, I, I had to speak really loudly or I had to limit myself to being indoors. And so I said to Danny, can't we get a microphone that works with my iPhone? Because you know all the microphones he has works with his technology. And he is, he is a techie geek um, and he's a nerd. And, but, but, the, but the mics he had didn't work for my iPhone. And so he, so he said, when I have time, I'll do the research and find one that works with your iPhone. But this week in the mail, this beautiful woman sent me this microphone and she did it so that I don't have to work so hard to, she says, so it's to get, um, it will get rid of the background noise so you don't have to work so hard to project your voice. Thank you for your vo wonderful videos. They are a real treasure. With love and light, Cheryl. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Cheryl. Um, my followers, thank you as well because they can now all hear me properly. And you know what this means? This means I can do these videos from anywhere, even the beach. I have avoided doing these videos from the beach, although I have wanted to from a long time for a long time because the sound of the waves are really loud in our beach over here. We have great waves, great for surfers, but the waves come crashing and the sounds are really loud. And of course, if there are families or people around, their sounds come through. But now I can do these videos from anywhere. So thank you. This microphone has brought me freedom. So today I wanted to talk about the power of suggestibility. And I want to explain to you what that is, but also it's inspired by a question that one of you asked me a couple of weeks ago. And I know I answered the question when it was asked. And by the way, if you have questions for me today, please post them in the comments. And the beautiful Abby, who is behind the camera, will read them and she will pick a few and she will ask me them. Um, oh, and let me know how the sound is as well. Can you hear me properly? Abby, are they saying they can hear me? Okay, so no one's saying they can't hear me, which is a, which is a good sign. Um, so the, the power of suggestibility is, particularly if you are someone who is super sensitive or an empath, when people say things or when you are marinated with certain beliefs, you tend to take it on. People who are empaths and highly sensitive are highly suggestible, which means that where people can drop suggestions into your mind and then you literally take it on. And I'll dive into it a little bit more in a minute. But a um, couple of weeks ago, one person wrote in and asked the question, uh, said something like that she had lost, she or he had lost all their faith or trust in the universe or in their own ability to be intuitive and uh, they had basically lost that trust and how can they get it back again? And I responded by saying, by immersing yourself with content that supports what it is that you are wanting to get back. So it ties into that. How is it that we actually lose our trust in our magic? When you are born, you are connected. And you don't even think about it. It's not even an issue. You don't even think, oh, do I have trust in it? Do I not have trust in it? It is one of your survival mechanisms. You sense when there are people in the room that are going to care for you. You sense the energies of your own parents. You know that these people are my parents. From the time that you are a baby, you can sense it. 
you can sense when there is a hostile energy around you and that you don't want to be around that energy. But as we grow up, it gets conditioned out of us by people telling us things and suggesting things and saying, no, you have to go with your uncle so-and-so. Even though you don't like the energy of uncle so-and-so, you get judged and you say, um, and you get told that you're being rude. And so you suppress your own intuition about these things. And that's how we lose ourselves. We lose our intuition. We lose our faith and trust in the world around us. Now, the last year and a half has been a real struggle for a lot of empaths, like a real struggle, because the things that have, we have been immersed in, so this is a key about suggestibility, is that what are you immersed in? What is it that is, what is the narrative that you are being fed day in and day out? And that narrative is what is, um, what your mind is starting to believe. And that is where empaths are really highly suggestible. There are people who are really strong in their beliefs. And no matter what is thrown at them, they're able to say, nope, that doesn't, there, it, it, it literally, whatever beliefs, whatever is thrown at them that goes against their own faith or their own belief, it literally bounces off and they don't take it on. But there are other people, particularly empaths, when people throw things at them that are contradictory to what you believe, it starts to chip away at your beliefs. That's what I mean about the power of suggestibility. People can continue to drop suggestions. And the question is, do you allow it to chip away at your core beliefs? And do you allow them to literally take that away from you? Or do you hold on to your core beliefs and do those other beliefs that contradict yours or go against your beliefs and values, do they bounce off? So remember that with many empaths, we tend to allow it to chip away at our core beliefs. That's how you lose your faith and your trust. The last year and a half has been really challenging because here's the thing, here's where we really start to lose our core beliefs. It's when the suggestions, the suggestibility or the suggestions are coming from authorities that we believe are more knowledgeable than we are. That's when we start to give our power away to the power of suggestibility. So when we have people like government authorities, doctors, medical people, people in white coats, people on TV, even people like me telling you stuff, you tend to allow it to chip away at, at your beliefs. You take it on. So one of my core values and core messages for you is do not let anyone take away your connection with your source, not even me. And anybody who is telling you, who is telling you anything that empowers you will always give you your power back so that you have the power. And, and if you feel empowered by the message, then know that it is truth. If you feel fear and disempowered by the message, then know that you have taken on something that is what I call suggestibility. Know that you are being highly suggestible at that moment if you are feeling fear at, uh, by that message. The opposite of faith and belief and trust and knowing, the opposite of that is fear. So if somebody is giving you what they call truth that is instilling, that is creating a fear, and you can feel it in your body, when you start to feel this fear rising in your body, you need to question it. You really do. Even if it's coming from a doctor, even if a doctor is telling you that this is terminal, your body is going to die. And if you're feeling that fear, it's like, okay, my body is not there yet. Let me talk to my higher self. Um, no, I'm not ready to check out of this planet. I need to work with a doctor that is going to work with me to take me from here to full healing. 
If it is a government thing where they're telling you, you are going to die because blah, 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 you are a carrier of such and such, and if you go outside, you're going to get it and you're going to die and blah, blah, blah. If it's a government thing and you're feeling this fear, like, oh my God, I'm going, and, you know, if I go outside, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. Um, one of the saddest stories I heard was when um, somebody was saying that their four-year-old child uh, was outside and he was wearing a mask and then his mask fell off and he started crying. And, his, and the father said, what's wrong? It's okay. And the kid said, I'm going to die because I don't have a mask on and I'm outside. The kid actually, that is what the power of suggestibility does. This four-year-old kid believed that because he was outside without a mask, he was going to die. That is the power of suggestibility and how strong it can be. So this is why I want you to know that you, your higher self, can, is stronger than anything. Do not let the power of suggestibility get to you. The last year and a half have left a lot of people traumatized with PTSD. I know a lot of people that are really struggling coming out of this. So what I want you to do, my suggestion, is for you to immerse yourself with what, you, what aligns with your values. So how do you know what aligns with your values? You know, because a lot of people will say, oh, that's woo-woo, that's not truth. You need to know the truth. And very often when they say it in that tone, that you're denying the truth, you're in denial. When they say it in that tone, what they're actually, what, what they're actually saying is that you are denying everything that brings up fear in your body. In actuality, that is your innate higher self saying, yes, if I feel it in my body, I don't want to be around it. If I feel that fear in my body, I don't want to be around it. That is my innate intuition, my connection, telling me that does not align with who I am. It doesn't align with my higher self. That is the message that I want you to know. Take that, take what is coming in and what you're feeling in your body as truth and not what the other people are telling you. Very often empaths will be like, oh, oh, right, I'm in denial. Yeah, they're probably right. Let me listen to those fear-based messages. Let me absorb all those fear-based messages and get to this place of fear. And then we get to this place of fear where we get into fight or flight and we start to become angry, divisive, or our immune system break down. What good is that? No, no, no. Just listen to the messages that make you feel empowered inside. That is your truth. Because if you are aligned with yourself, your higher self, your truth, you are going to be a-okay. Really, really. So I want to give you an example to really um, try and get this message across. When I first started sharing my message, when I first started sharing the near-death experience I had and the healing and all that, so there were literally two camps of people. One camp of people were like, oh my gosh, um, this is so amazing. I love your story. You've really inspired me and thank you for sharing. And then they would go on to share experiences that they had, which would make me feel that, oh my gosh, it would give me, basically it feeds on each other. Then, then they're sharing stuff that they've gone through, which kind of, endorses what I've gone through and so then I feel even stronger about my message and I feel yeah it, it it's it's something people are resonating with and it's not just me I'm not crazy it really did happen but there was another camp of people who were hearing my message who were like oh uh, you don't have any proof that's just a personal anecdote that doesn't happen cancer doesn't just disappear like that um, uh, you, uh, you were probably misdiagnosed. That was a big one. I was told that. And misdiagnosed by five different doctors over a period of four years? That's ridiculous. But no, you were probably misdiagnosed. It happens sometimes. So there was this whole other faction. So, so literally two groups of people. 
here's the mistake I made. I listened to that group because that group shamed me. They were saying, oh, the other group is woo-woo. Oh, that's all woo-woo. Oh, you're not being realistic. You got to get real. This is science. I have subsequently realized that science doesn't deny these kinds of things. Science is, real science is broader. There are scientists like Bruce Lipton, Bruce Grayson, Greg Braden, Joe Dispenza, all of whom talk about my experience and endorse it. But at that time, it was the medical science paradigm. And so here they were saying that this is science and that stuff is woo woo and you gotta get real. So I felt shamed into falling into that group. So I started to dance for that group and I started to provide them with more explanation and more evidence and, and every time, no matter what I gave them, there seemed to be more. Like they, their mind was not ready to accept what I was saying at face value. They needed more in the way of proof of almost like a personal experience or something which I didn't have. And here's the other thing that I just want to tell you about scientific research is that most scientific research is funded by medical pharmaceutical, by the whole medical pharmaceutical industry. So things like what happened to me do not get the kind of um, big attention that say research into drugs would get. The kind of healing I had would not get as much attention because there's nobody to fund it. There's nobody to fund that kind of research as to how did it happen, why did it happen, how do the emotions work in, in illnesses, how is it that clearing the emotions can heal an illness and so on. That kind of thing won't get funded because nobody can make money off of it. And so when people say there's no science, of course there isn't because there's nobody to fund that kind of research. But it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Real science actually recognizes that. So anyway, back to my story. I started to focus on the naysayers because I was green and new at this and I wanted them to believe me. But because the more I focused on the naysayers and the debunkers, the more I had to speak in their language, the more I was catering them to them, the more I was tailoring to their energy, the more naysayers and debunkers I was attracting because I was operating on their level. And the more naysayers and debunkers I was attracting, the more immersed I was in that world, I started to feel that my truth was starting to get chipped away. It was, it was as though they were taking my miracle away from me. And I started to get depressed. But I didn't realize that what I had done was I had made a choice. The two worlds existed simultaneously. But somehow, empaths tend to go towards the naysayers to try to convince them and, uh, and feel ashamed of going towards, if, if the naysayers say, oh, they're, they're woo-woos, they'll believe anything, that's not the truth, that's not science, blah, blah, blah. So we tend to feel shamed. So that's another thing that causes us to lose our faith, lose our trust, is when we get shamed. So here's the thing, when I started to realize that, oh my gosh, I've, I've done this. I've attracted all these naysayers by catering my message to them. I shifted. I decided to talk to all the people who, um, th there was this whole world out there of people who were hungry for what I was saying. So I tailored my message totally to them. And when I started doing that, I started going deeper and my belief and my faith and everything got stronger. I started to get evidence. People were telling me their stories and they were telling me their experiences, like incredible experiences, hundreds, thousands. Wayne Dyer discovered my story. My book got published. I completely immersed myself in the world of people who believed, who were aligned with me and I kept going. What happened is, Whenever naysayers came up to me and said, hey, you don't have any proof. Hey, I want you to convince me. My response to them would be that it's not my job to convince you. When you're ready, you will believe.
but it's not my job to convince you. You are completely entitled to your belief. But I made damn sure that I was aligned with what uplifted me and what I believed in. Your body will tell you because my body was being dragged down when I was dealing with the debunkers and the naysayers. My body is uplifted when I speak with people who are like, oh my gosh, I had a similar experience. Oh my gosh, I love what you're saying. Oh, I so relate. Oh, I'm uplifted by that. That is where I go now. That is what I invite you to do. I invite you to do that with every aspect of your life. If somebody is dragging you down, if if information that's coming at you is dragging you down, it means it's not aligned with who your spirit, your soul came here to be and do and share. And remember that. Remember the power of suggestibility can be very strong, especially if you're an empath. But check in with your body. Your body never lies. So thank you for listening in. And I'm going to ask Abby if there are any questions. I would say take it slowly. Take it at your own pace. And uh, you may find you never want to go back to life the way it was before. I know I am. I used to travel like crazy before. Um, I used to say yes to doing events. If there was a gap in my schedule, there was like no reason to say no. Not anymore. I don't ever want to travel as much as I used to. I'm going back to traveling. But I have changed the way I do my work. And again, just to give you my example, so you can tailor your, so tailor your life in a way that suits you, not in a way that suits other people. So right now, um, events are starting to open up. Speaking invitations are starting to come in again for me. But my own interest lies in um, what I want to do moving forward is I don't want to do back-to-back -back keynotes or half-day workshops and things like I used to. I'm more interested in doing retreats and intimate retreats that are four days, five days, seven days long or longer, where I get to spend time with people and get to know you, where you get to be cocooned in healing empathic energy for um, and you get to be immersed and cocooned and marinated in this energy. It's not like a boom, you get a 90-minute keynote speech and you're back into the world again. I don't want to do those anymore. I don't think they're beneficial for the audience. People can hear my speeches online. but Okay, so yes, people can hear my speeches online. So I am completely... Ah, internet just cut out. Okay, thank you. So I am completely changing the way I work. So you may find that you want to completely change the way that you integrate back into the world. Oh, yes, it is. Tell, uh, OK, I've got the question. So are we back on again? Back on again. OK, so just so you know, the question was from someone asking how she can integrate back into the world after coming out of one and a half years of being in lockdown, how would she now um, integrate back into the world? And so my response is, do it slowly, do it gently, and you may not want to go back to the way you were before. I know I certainly don't. And honor yourself. Honor the pace that you want to go at. That's very important. And remember, this, uh, this whole one and a half years, it could have been a gift for you to slow down. I know for me it was. It was a gift to slow down and to rethink how I want to move forward. And then another question, I guess we'll repeat this question, um, was how to, why sometimes the things you're getting from your higher self happen immediately, and then the other ones just seem to peter out or not appear? So why do sometimes things that come from your higher self happen immediately? And why do some things peter out and not appear uh, at all? So it all depends on how ready you are for it. Because we always have the free will to change and do things. So always check in and talk to yourself. One of the things I do is I allow, I, I take moments of silence, um, of, not, of no input from the outside world. 
I sit in a park or on the beach or here, right here in my little yard, and I ask my higher self. Sometimes I ask my physical body. If I have, if I have any physical symptoms going on, I will ask my symptoms. What is it that you're trying to tell me? And usually my symptoms are telling me something like, oh, you are resistant to such and such and such. So when you have some resistance to things, that's when things don't come to you as fast. And so allow your body to talk to you. Allow your soul to talk to you. Um, that is where your true power lies. And it doesn't mean you cut yourself off from information coming at you from the outside world. I want to be clear on this. I'm not saying absolutely cut yourself off from what's happening in the outside world or the internet or data or, I mean, or anything. The outside world is just that. It's data. It is data. When you look on the internet, when you look on social media, when you watch the news, it is data for you. There is, and there's a lot of conflicting data. But remember, for you, your soul, that data is not truth. Your soul has the ability to actually determine and filter what is truth for you and what is not. Every individual has their own truth. And so we have to learn to honor each other. It's too bad our world has become very divisive where there doesn't seem to be much room for, for divergent views. And we seem to shame each other when we don't have the same views. What we need to do is to really tune into that higher power within ourselves and respect that everybody else also has their own connection and are following their own. And one of the things that happens is that when you tune into your own, you don't have a need to attack anybody who, is not, who does not have the same views as you do. You will just honor your views and you will keep honoring your views and you will continue to align yourself with views of other people and other events and other things happening in the world that continue to uplift you and your energy. And uh, one, one of the other pieces I wanted to say here, which also could be related to the question, what sometimes takes us off our rails and makes it longer for things to happen, is that as empaths, we easily get derailed by the power of suggestibility. All it takes is for someone to shame you or something and say, oh, you should be doing this. I get it all the time with people saying to me, oh, with your followers, this is what you should be saying. And what I do, though, is I take my near-death experience view. The near-death experience view is that we are all consciousness. We are all connected. And the most important thing, the most important thing is to love and to know that um, that that our love, so love is the opposite of fear. The most important thing is to spread love and is to spread the fact that we have our own connection and that we are more powerful than we believe. And we don't need to go around convincing people and fighting with people. Um, I believe in teaching people uh, and I believe in raising people's consciousness. I believe in things like that. And I think there are ways to do that. When we, um, when we debunk people and shame people, we are lowering our energies. We're lowering our consciousness. When we raise our consciousness, when we raise our own consciousness and align with what we believe in, and then we speak from that place, that's when people listen, not when we shame them, not when we attack them for do not doing what we say. So... Basically, I'd like to leave you with that message unless we have any other. So a couple people are asking questions about how to love yourself, how to trust yourself. Can you direct them to your YouTube videos and then maybe you can talk a little bit about your free teachings that you've written? Okay, yes. So I have a ton of uh, YouTube videos on how to love yourself. Please go to my YouTube channel. Um, please subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the like button and subscribe so you'll get more like this. Um, but I have a ton of videos, so please look back on my older videos. Um, and if you're, and uh, regarding my retreat, it's in December in Sedona. 
we get to spend four full days together in beautiful Sedona. I love Sedona because the energies are already higher, so it's so much easier to work in that energy. And what we will do is we will immerse ourselves in four full days of doing uplifting work, of realizing our own connection with our higher self, finding our soul's purpose, and also we will learn how to use our intuition more. We will learn how to access our own healing powers more. We will do energy experiments. Um, basically, it'll just be, uh, to me, like an awesome four days where I get to spend a lot of time with all of you. We will do things like, um, uh, you know, there will be stuff like uh, deep journeys, journaling, fireside chats. That's just, just, it'll be packed four days of just cool, fun stuff together with like-minded people. So we'd love for you to join. Um, we'll put the link in, in the comments below on the event. So thank you so much, everyone. I love you guys, and I look forward to seeing you next week.